say revolutionaries don't have no fun. I know that's what they say. We've been having fun. We've been having fun out here. We waiting on the Lord to join us. Black and green. It's only revolution, baby. It's only revolution, baby. Ain't that hard, but I'm going to do it. Ready over there. That's right. Yeah, the Revolutionary Road Radio Show, rocking the town every Monday night at 10 p.m. on the Tan Talk Network. This is the only revolutionary radio show on the air on this station and probably in most stations in Florida anyway. And I am your host, the Rev, I'm here with a special new co-host that's coming on board, Ansela. Hi, Ansela. Hi. And uh, many of you all, of course, know Connie Burton, who should be calling in soon, as well as uh, Crown Dion. Uh, we have a special guest tonight on our show, and I'll get to that in a moment, but I want to give a special shout-out to my wife, Barb, to Pete, our New York, our NYC correspondent, who calls in from time to time. Also, Robin the Apostle Robin over there in Orlando, and uh, Miguel, and uh, just everyone who has contributed to the show. Uh, tonight at the helm is uh, Pete, who is uh, our engineer. What's up, Pete? Doing great. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Uh, great to have you on board with us tonight. Uh, Glad to be a part of it. Yeah, and Pete is uh, going to be filling in and uh, maybe uh, to hear more often uh, on the show. And uh, immediately following our show is, of course, Spectrum 360, uh, which Mark Skogman, who has been our um, engineer from time to time, uh, has. And we expect him to come on the air after. Uh, tonight's show is going to be very interesting. I want to let you know, though, that you can find out about us by going to wwwtantalk 1340 dot com that's tantalk 1340.com we are podcasting we are live streaming right now as we speak uh we're on video uh on the world wide web and we are also uh recording podcasts that you can download and subscribe to in addition to being on a youtube channel called the revolutionary road radio show and we want you to like us on facebook last but not least if you have a phone a smartphone, or as I call my phone, a dumb phone, but I won't say which company, uh, you can download on a TuneIn app. So you can listen to the show 24-7, seven days a week, ad nauseum, and hear me and, and my wonderful co-hosts and engineers, but hear my ugly, nasty voice uh, at least uh, once a week. If you choose multiple times a week, if you need to wake up in the morning for something to annoy you to wake up, you can do that. Um, we are a revolutionary show, and what we mean by that is we do not follow the standard body politic of the dumb Republicans or the Republicraps or whatever you want to call them. Uh, we dump the Trump, and we don't feel the burn here on this show because we are revolutionary. We support independent revolutionary candidates on this show unashamedly, and we believe it's time that our country have a third party. We have a, a, a real, true, honest, revolutionary, progressive win, like what happened this uh, past few days in uh, England. They have a new uh, head of the uh, Labor Party who's a radical revolutionary socialist, and I don't mean the kind that we talk about here, but the real kind. And, hey, I'm not afraid of the S word, and I don't mean SH. I mean socialist. I'm not afraid of the C word, communist. I'm not afraid of revolution. I'm not afraid of any kind of concept like that. I'm not afraid of anarchist. You're going to hear these kind of perspectives on this show that you won't hear anywhere else. And uh, tonight is no exception. Um, first of all, we want to thank our sponsor. Our primary sponsor right now is St. Petersburg Community Acupuncture. And uh, you'll be hearing more about them. We're going to have a special show with them in the future, as well as our own Crown, who is one of my co-hosts. Um, and uh, we'll be uh, doing a whole series of shows in the future with some of the artists that uh, we have on this show, particularly Crown. But we want to thank St. Petersburg Community Acupuncture, who offers on a sliding scale alternative medicines based around acupuncture. And uh, they're located at 1624 Central Avenue. That's 1624 Central Avenue in St. Petersburg, offering the best in alternative medicines on a sliding scale, and please go out there and support them. Acupuncture is a great way of relieving tension. Their number is 727-823-1700. 
Uh, for the entire hour, we have a special guest on our show. First, I want to welcome my co-host, uh, Connie. Are you on the air? Yes, I am. Hello. Wonderful. And I don't know if Crown has called in yet. Okay. Well, Connie's on the air with me, and we are about to have on the air one of my dearest friends who I've known for many years and been involved in a major, major campaign with her for many years that's ongoing called the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign. It grew out of a movement uh, started by Dr. King uh, in the last year of his life. Many may be aware of the Poor People's uh, Movement. At that point in Dr. King's life, he began to move from just the problem of racism, but also classism. And he began to speak out against the imperial government of the United States. And at that point, we know what happened, unfortunately. Well, the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign grew out of that. Um, is uh, Sherry on the air yet? No, she's not. Okay. We'll talk a little bit longer. I might have to give her a call. But, uh, Connie, maybe you could share with us just a little bit and talk about um, basically what you understand the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign to be. Well, I find it to be, uh, like you said, born from the civil rights movement and work that Dr. King uh, recognized that the issue of racism in itself uh, could not be solved, but the issue of poverty had to be addressed. And so it was through this work that Dr. King started moving to expand beyond just uh, dealing with uh, the ending of uh, uh, segregated water fountains, but to call attention to the plight of the poor, uh, the fact that we was having severe inequities in housing, uh, whether it was education, employment, and that was a campaign that would allow uh, many folks uh, that find themselves to be living in poverty uh, to come and join, to put pressure on this government to address the uh, the issues of economic injustice. And unfortunately for uh, Dr. King, uh, and us, in a lot of ways, uh, he was assassinated. And it's been through the work of many, you know, a, a variety of organizations that have continued to push this issue of poverty to keep it front and center. And, um, you know, th that's what I understand. You know, this unfinished work that, that has to be completed. And, uh, you know, I'm under the uh, understanding that uh, the government will not be able, nor does it have the interest in solving these issues, and so thereby the people has to con take the control in developing not only the agenda, but also individuals that will speak to this platform, whether it be locally or nationally. Well, uh, you summed it up pretty well. Um Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, uh, as a, an organization, has been around 20 years. Its founding uh, being uh, something that grew out of what was called the Welfare Rights Movement, uh, which was born in the 90s when, yes, a Democrat, Clinton, uh, declared a war on the poor in two ways, by supporting welfare deform and signing this Welfare Act that really didn't offer educational or child care components to it and threw people out on the streets working minimum wage jobs by which they could never get ahead. And the second way he did it was increasing the power of the police state by putting 100,000 more police uh, on the ground. And so as a result of that, um, the welfare rights movement grew, and in it particularly um, the uh, poor people's economic human rights movement. And uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask, because uh, maybe uh, she's not in this uh, Eastern time zone. I just realized she might not be. So um, I don't know if, um, if Pete, you can give her a call. It's a 215 area code. Uh, it's 215-869-4700. Uh, and that's okay to give that out because that's the Poor People's Campaign number. And while uh, he's trying to get a hold of her, uh, I, I thought it was important to have her on in the wake of what is happening uh, in the next week and a half. A major event is happening that's already, uh, I guess, beginning this weekend, and that is the papal visit, the visit of the Pope, Pope Francis. Perhaps 
by many people's standards, the most uh, justice-seeking and radical pope yet. Um, pope Francis, uh, who takes his name after St. Francis of Assisi, who is very committed to social justice and ending poverty, um, he is, in fact, uh, coming to the United States, uh, much to the chagrin, by the way, of conservative Catholics and conservative Republicans who have decried this pope as some kind of liberal commie. Uh, first time I've ever heard of a pope referred to as a commie, but uh, I find it kind of hilarious. Uh, this pope has done such radical things as wash the feet of the homeless, uh, had dinner with inmates in prison, invited homeless and poor folks into the Vatican to hang out with him, has decried uh, poverty, has called upon the United States to end wars of aggression here and abroad, and has pointed out the fact that uh, capitalism is the source of the pain and suffering happening here and abroad. And for those kind of statements, as well as saying, who am I to judge when it comes to gay people, and uh, also welcoming women in a much more welcoming way than ever has been done by any pope, this pope, by everybody's standards, is either loved or reviled like no other pope in history. So, at least in my understanding of church history, as a, a, a theologian myself, I do have a, a doctorate in ministry. I know people find that hard to believe because I'm probably one of the most irreverent reverends you'll ever meet. But uh, I do believe we have Sherry on the line, and let me give you an introduction to Sherry Hockley. She's a dear friend of mine who, I, as I mentioned, I've known for 20 years, and we have been involved in the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign as well as Kensington Welfare Rights Union. She has been labeled numerous times uh, by various publications as uh, a rabble-rouser and woman of the year in one uh, several, a few times with the Philadelphia Inquirer, I believe, and uh, where she's from, which is Philadelphia. She was a vice presidential candidate for the Green Party with Jill Stein in the 2012 uh, Green Party ticket for president. Uh, she's been arrested more than 200 times, not because of doing anything criminal except trying to help poor people and help people find housing. Uh, she's been known to take over with her crew including myself on a few occasions, uh, vacant houses and doing something that's totally radical. Can you believe giving houses to homeless and poor folks? Wow, what a concept. That are, that's sitting there vacant, that are government-owned or bank-owned. So I'm real proud to have Sherry on. We've had her on before. It's been a while and long overdue, especially with this thing coming up. I think it's a great time to have Sherry on again. And I'm, of course, here with uh, my new co-host, Ansela. And also Connie Burton, who I know you know very well, Sherry. And then, of course, we got Pete at the helm. How are you? You there? Hi, all you wonderful people. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Hi. I wish you guys were here. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. is it is it hot? <laughs> um, is it cooler there? <laughs> yeah, it's cooler here uh, during the day, so it's definitely hot as hell. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, we're busy doing our usual thing, trying to figure out how to make something out of nothing. Yeah, that's kind of a interesting biblical concept, actually, too, the old mustard seed concept. Um, and I know you're up to your usual shenanigans, Sherry. Uh, <laughs> uh, He's telling and, on you, Sherry. <laughs> yeah. But, you know yeah. what, the, these are shenanigans for just causes, and, you know... Um, before we get into what you're doing now in the papal visit, I, I know your son, who is a, uh, and not not your son that runs the house there, Guillermo, who give a shout out to him for us, please. But your eldest son is an actor in Hollywood and has done some, uh, uh, you know, some films, the uh, independent genre. He is working on a film right now. It's my understanding about you and he and the life you've led in the Poor People's Campaign. Is that right? Uh, uh oh. You there? I think we lost her. Oh. Sherry. Oh, please call back. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about it. her son, Mark Weber, who you may remember from um, Snow Days with Chevy Chase and also a couple other films. Um, 
uh, she did a film with Rosario, or he did a film with Rosario Dawson, um, and he did, um, a, a film who, I can't remember the name of the film now, it's terrible, but it was about video games. Uh, Sherry, what was the name of that film your son did about the video uh, games? Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, so. That's a good movie. I, I liked it. it. It was fun. Yes, it is. That's good. Um, yeah. her, her son played the uh, uh, guy in the band who played the guitar, not the bass player, but the guitar player. Yeah, from the Sex Bomb. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the guy. It, was, it wasn't the main character. It was the it was the other guy. Yeah, and so he produced that film and starred in it. Well, he <laughs> he is now working on a film. If I'm stating this correctly, Sherry, <coughs> that chronicles the life you guys have led as well as uh, the Poor People's Campaign and how it, it came to be. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, it is. And uh, I, I don't know when there's going to be a release date on that because I know things are just beginning production. Is that right? Oh, boy. <laughs> Sherry, you got to call on a better connection here. <laughs> she's, probably, she's probably in the middle of... Uh, uh, a vacant building t- takeover. So those track phones. Step out of the so those track theory. phones, yeah. <laughs> and she might be using a track phone so the old tracer. Not. I don't know. Uh, hopefully she'll call back in a minute. But um, I, I don't know if you were aware of this, Connie, about the film that uh, her son's making. I don't think you actually met her eldest son. You met Guillermo, right? That's correct. Yeah. Well, well Sherry, that... Sherry, you on a good connection now? We keep losing you. Oh, well, okay. Sorry. <laughs> We're not taking any call-ins right now. <laughs> well, thanks for listening, though, whoever that is. We don't usually do call-ins on this show. We're just waiting for Sherry to call back. This is kind of a fun situation here. But, yeah, um, her son is working on a documentary film. Uh, well, not a documentary, but a bio film, uh, really about Sherry and her life and his life with uh, Sherry and the struggles they had. When, when he was younger, he lived... Uh, with her when they were homeless and were sleeping in a car. And in fact, at one point they were sleeping in the car and the car was completely uh, stripped down while they were still sleeping. And they woke up to a car with no wheels. And oh yeah, goodness. so anyway, <laughs> she's lived it and she's lived to tell about it. And uh, we're hoping she'll get back on. But one of the reasons that we have her on tonight is to talk about this visit by Pope Francis to Philadelphia. And, This pope, as I mentioned before, has been perhaps the most controversial pope in history, I would say, in the in the positive way, but also the fact that people have either absolutely loved him and what he's about, or, as in the case of conservative Catholics and even some in the Vatican, as well as uh, conservatives at large, reviled him. And so what happened uh, with this papal visit has been a lot of attacks verbally coming from Republicans in particular. This includes the illustrious Dump the Trump, as well as uh, Ted Cruz, who is supposedly a Catholic, and a whole host of others, I think Jeb Bush as well, who said that both of them have said, and Trump as well, that he needs to stay out of politics. Mm. Uh, and the thing that's humorous yeah. about that is there has always been a at least a concept within the church that the idea of justice for the poor should be paramount for anyone who calls himself a Christian. So it's kind of strange, isn't it, Connie, that this pope who's actually trying to bring that out and say that's what we need to be doing and is speaking about such things as uh, colonialism and what colonialism did, which, you know, you don't hear anybody usually talking about that unless it's some, you know, uh, African radical. But he's talking about it. What do you think about this, Connie? And what, what do you think about this current pope? Well, you know, usually uh, it's been my experience not to understand anything that they were saying as if they was mumbling. And so just to hear him speak with clarity uh, regarding the issues as he see the world, uh, not the role in which he would just see if he was caught up behind his um, the church uh, that he 
would be able to have all of the fineries of life. But he's actually seeing the suffering of a global world, and he's been able to identify the source of that suffering. And so with this trip coming to the America, it's almost as if, and, and as much as, you know, you hear these uh, uh, alleged politicians, wannabe politicians, uh, for a long time, they drape themselves in this doctrine of being a Christian country, a Christian nation. And so now with the Pope being able to highlight the uh, the uh, contradictions that exist in people's theories, uh, that is what is hated now. Because he's mm-hmm. been able to speak for the poor. He's been able to uh, identify the root cause of this poverty. And he's asked uh, uh, national leaders and political leaders to address these issues. And, you know, because he's asked that and actually challenged the uh, uh, status quo, not only of the church, but of... Um, just uh, <laughs> the established order of capitalism itself has gotten him in major, major hot water. Uh, how dare he attack those institutions? And uh, he's used very, very specific language, especially in his encyclicals, which are usually uh, thought of as the uh, basic Magna Carta or words of the Pope himself as far as church dogma. And he said these kind of things and it's challenged the status quo. I believe we have Sherry back on. Are you on, Sherry? Yes. Yeah, I'm ho- back on. I Welcome ho- back, Sherry. <laughs> Sherry, are, are you not, again. <laughs> are, you're not using a track phone, are you, to avoid uh, <laughs> detection? Pretty much. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, Pete, my engineer, was right. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've known Sherry for years, and we joke around about this. But, you know, the system out there doesn't want people that are vocally speaking out against it, especially uh, uh, that aren't going along with the status quo. And Connie, of course, you know, and I know, and Ansel doesn't really quite know Sherry yet, but I'm sure she understands the concept, uh, and I know Pete does, that um, people that challenge the status quo are going to be disrupted. So who knows what's behind this? It could be just technical difficulties, but we're glad you're back on, Sherry. What is this crazy thing that you're going to be doing along with many others with the visit of the Pope next week? Well, uh, we tried to not do our activity as long as we possibly could, um, but we called um, and asked as many churches as possible in the Philadelphia area to help us house uh, some families that we have uh, as well as to um, support us with the families that are supposed to be deported. Uh, nobody in the faith community has stepped forward um, other than to, like, offer some water and stuff, which we really appreciate it. Um, so we've uh, set up a Church of the Poor uh, slash encampment uh, on American Street in Kensington, and uh, uh, we just carried a bathtub and set that up, and now we're um, <laughs> building shacks and tents and everything uh, that we possibly can to uh, help provide for these families until um, the uh, until the Pope arrives. So, and so we're hoping that we're not going to be like you know bulldozed or anything like that uh, before the Pope gets here. We're trying to get people housing. Do you think um, <laughs> with this impending visit of the Pope, and it's my understanding he's going to be in Washington and New York, right? Has that already happened? Uh, uh, I believe he arrived on September the 22nd. Now, if this is going to be the first place that he arrives, uh-huh. is, yeah, on the 22nd or something like that here in Philadelphia. So we've got from now until then to 
and, and hopefully survive. And apparently this is one of the first uh, ever of a pope he's going to address Congress, which yeah. is interesting. Um, yeah, th- no, this is the first time he's going to ever be in this country, and wow. it's going to be in Philadelphia. Well, and uh, a couple weeks ago, or maybe three weeks ago, uh, five people were shot at across the street from my block where I live, and they three, actually where we have the encampment set up now. Um, uh, three days after that happened, they had Homeland Security and about um, uh, ten. Uh, I mean, uh, three hundred police officers and uh, Homeland Security preparing for uh, the Pope's, um, for the Pope coming. Well, it begs the question, are they trying to protect the Pope, or are they trying to keep the Pope from seeing the reality of poverty in America? Mm-hmm. Um, they are trying to, of course, I think, uh, they are trying to keep the Pope from seeing the reality of poverty in America. Hmm. Well, you know, this is a pope that has obviously spoken out very strongly about poverty globally, and I'm sure for the powers that be, both the Demopublicans, as I like to put it, because they're both two parties of the same coin, um, it seems to me there's a vested interest in us not looking like a third world, quote unquote, third world, I hate that word, country, uh, and the last thing we want the world to see, which I think the world already knows, but the last thing we want the world to see is, um, you know, poverty in this country up front and uh, clear. And um, why, why well, Sherry, why do you think it's such a threat uh, to this government, to the people in power, for people to see the truth about our country? Well, I mean, obviously... Um, you know, uh, they're doing nothing but, uh, what the regular capitalists do is trying to figure out how to make lots of money when the Pope comes into town. Uh, they don't give a damn about the amount of people that are incarcerated here. They don't care that people are unemployed, um, that families don't have a place to live. Um, we have newborn babies on the lot. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just don't think the Pope would unite with the idea that, um, you know, people are trying to buy tickets off of each other in order to be in the downtown area in order to get a glimpse of the Pope. Uh, and at the mean, and in the meantime, uh, you know, women and children have no place to live. Con- con- so, well, go ahead, Jerry. Yeah. Um, you know, go ahead, Connie. Co- Connie, I was wondering if you had a comment or question. And Sherry, I am just so absolutely, you know, just so proud of all of your work. Um, have you been able to, say, um, build coalitions with, say, other groups that might be dealing with... Oh, hello. I'm sorry. The pri- is she there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. Okay. I there? want to know the ability to build coalitions with other organizations uh, as you prepare for the Pope's visit. Well, uh, I would love to. I would love to say that um, the faith community is stepping up, um, but. In all fairness, uh, they, you know, we couldn't announce publicly that we were doing this until today. So it'll be a matter of time to see what happens in terms of the faith community's response. But other than that, um, except for a wonderful radio program like yours, um, we are pretty much blacked out of any kind of media. Um, so it's going to be a fight to see if we get any kind of media coverage whatsoever before they try and, uh, you know, demolish everything down at the tent site. Mm-hmm. So, 
I, I would assume, and we're going to extend this conversation a bit longer before we go to a quick break, um, which I hope you can stay on after because we're a little bit beyond the time we normally take a break, but I think this is important to continue the dialogue. Uh, Sherry, is your sense that um, the handlers, if you will, <laughs> and I, I, handlers are always a fun thing because they their job is to ensure that the people don't get contact with whoever that may be, whether it's a politician or a celebrity. Um, do you think the handlers of uh, the Vatican visit, of the Pope's visit, are going to do everything they can to uh, isolate him from the reality? Oh, absolutely. Um, I highly doubt he's going to make it into Kensington. And if he makes it into Kensington, uh, they'll already have a prearranged visit for him. Mm. Mm. So orchestrated. You know, he's yeah, been he's and, been no, an orchestrated, cleaned up, uh, calculated visit. Visit. Well, it's interesting. Like, like if they if they did go through Kensington or whatever, it'd be to visit somebody that has AIDS or something in one of the hospitals. I heard that he's coming to uh, potentially visit one of our prisons. Um. I don't know, so we'll see. Well, it, 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 he has been known to go uh, off uh, program, and uh, he seems. And we're to hoping that many of your listeners will share uh, the the pictures uh, and the faces and tweets and uh, help us in our efforts to potentially draw attention to the Pope, so that he. Um, potentially stops and visits the Church of the Poor in Kensington. Well, we certainly hope that's going to happen. Um, I hope you can stay with us a few minutes longer. We're going to take a quick break and go to our announcements. uh, But uh, you have been listening to the Revolutionary Road Radio Show with my co-hosts, Ansela, and, of course, the wonderful Connie Burton, housing rights activist, and Pete at the helm here. Uh, and we're talking to Sherry Honkala, who is the National Coordinator of the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign. When we come back from uh, the break and the announcements, we're going to continue our discussion with Sherry Honkala. But for now, we want to let you know what's going on in the area, as well as tell you about the Revolutionary Road show itself. The Revolutionary Road radio show is... On every Monday night at 10 p.m. on the Tan Talk Radio Network, 1340 a.m., we are podcasted, web broadcasted, live streamed, and you can tune in on your phone app. All that can be found by going to tantalk1340.com. You can like us on Facebook. You can also go to our YouTube channel, The Revolutionary Road Radio Show. As always, this show is produced by Squatter Productions. We thank the following groups for endorsing our show, the Revolutionary Caucus of Tampa Bay, the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, Pinellas Greens, Uhuru Solidarity Movement, the Catholic Worker, Students for Democratic Society at USF St. Petersburg, who, by the way, are having their meeting of of students tomorrow. Uh, I am part of that group, Students for Democratic Society. I'm actually a student back at USF working on another degree. And uh, they are having their meeting tomorrow at 1.30 at the Regatta Room in the cafeteria on the St. Pete campus of USF. Uh, You can call 727-278-1547 for information. We also want to thank the Gulf Coast Greens, the Pinellas Greens, and uh, the Jill Stein Campaign for supporting this show, as well as My Place in Recovery Program, Thrift Store, and Drop-In Center, which is a program for recovering addicts and alcoholics, as well as those who are just struggling with life's issues. I strongly encourage you to support them. They're at 1655 16th Street South. That's 1655 16th Street South. We also want to thank the Refuge Worker Center and St. Petersburg uh, Food Not Bombs, soon to launch their first outreach this Wednesday, and, of course, the Refuge of Tampa Bay. Want to let you know about some things coming up, but we first want to thank our, our key sponsor again, St. Petersburg Community Acupuncture, located at 1624 Central Avenue. That's 1624 Central Avenue in St. Petersburg, offering the best in alternative medicines on a sliding scale and acupuncture. Please, uh, 727-823-1700, 727 
823-1700 is uh, how you can reach them. And we want to let you know about some other things happening in the area. This uh, Wednesday night, as always, St. Pete for Peace will host their film series. tonight. Uh, this uh, Wednesday is the film Isolated, which talks about indigenous people on a particular island that are trying to avoid civilization destroying their culture. That's uh, this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. at Community Cafe, 2450 Central Avenue. And you can go to stpforpeace.org. Also, Radical Reads is happening this Wednesday. You can look for them on uh, Facebook. And uh, they are going to be having a dis- book discussion. Also, uh, this Friday, uh, there's going to be a Know Your Rights workshop at the Enoch Davis Center at 530 in St. Petersburg. This Sunday, there's going to be a community flea market at the Venture Compound. You can Google them on Facebook. And then also, coming in the month of October, Peace in the Park at Williams Park, October 3rd, featuring Crown, Pedro, uh, Dream Window, Fall on Purpose, and a whole host of other bands, as well as speakers, tabling, and groups. Uh, And then in addition to that, several other things are coming to the area, including the Maze of Horror, Halloween outreach, uh, haunted house type of thing that's going to happen, that's going to support our work with homeless families. That is the work of Refuge Ministries. Well, we've been on the radio uh, talking with, uh, on the phone actually, of course we're on the radio, been on the phone talking with Sherry Honkla. Are you there, Sherry? Yes, I am. Okay. And Connie, of course, is with me, as well as Ansela. And I wanted to give more opportunity for Connie or Ansela to ask a question of Sherry. So either one of you, go ahead. You there, Connie? Yeah, I'm here. I can't think of a question. Only wishing I was there to join you. Oh, I wish you were, too, Connie. We we need your energy and your spirit. So... um, I mean, you know how rough things are getting these days. Well, yes, yes. Ansel is still new at this. She's getting a little nervous, but she'll <laughs> she'll get the hang of it. But you know, Sherry, I do have another question. One is, how can we help you? And I want to tell tell that you know while we still have time in the show, so that I can at the end tell it as well. But how can people help support the Church of the Poor and this encampment? Well, I mean, definitely. Um, I always have to ask uh, for people to send, you know, their $5 or whatever. Um, once again, uh, I'm using, you know, someday we'll have enough money that we won't do things like use our own rent money. Um, you know, I had to get a van today in order to go around and scrap wood. And, you know, that that doesn't run on love alone, that runs on gasoline and, uh, you know, getting nails and getting whatever we possibly can um, in order to put together this encampment. You know, when people visualize what you're doing there, um, and, you know, I've been to Kensington. Can you describe for our people uh, that listen what Kensington is like? Kensington is, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, almost like a borough uh, like they would in New York City, or a, I, I don't know, a township that's part of Philadelphia at large. Uh, it's West Philly, right? No, it's actually North. North um, Philly. Ke- yeah, Kensington is Kensington, Philadelphia is the poorest district in the state of Pennsylvania. Five years ago, the number one source of income used to be welfare, but with the welfare cuts, the number one source of income in Kensington now is drugs. Over 49% of people in Kensington are not, I'm mean, not just in Kensington, but in Philadelphia are not online. So most people don't have like emails, uh, not even like Facebooks, that kind of stuff. Uh, if people are over 30, um, they tend to never have made more than, um, they will never make more than their parents or any other generation. And they're generally entering a part of what's considered to be the permanently unemployed. Most people have some kind of criminal background check, criminal background, so they're unable to find um, different forms of employment. 
So, yeah, so there's, um, it's racially diverse. There's a growing equality of misery. Um, so <laughs> it's a shame to have that kind of equality. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's a growing equality of misery. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Haitian. It's the melting pot for poverty. Hmm. So I have with me um, uh, somebody that's sitting next to me that wants to say a couple of words. Um, Please. That has started an organization called uh, Young World. Um, so, you want to say a couple of words, Hack? Not really. Not really. I don't feel like talking right now. Okay. <laughs> He's like me. He Putting him on the spot, <laughs> Sherry. He changed his mind. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you can tell him. We're, we're okay, not... Okay, well, what, what is Young World? <coughs> it's, it's, a, it's a voice for the younger people in, this, in Philly that, you know what I mean? They just speak against crooked cops and crooked... People, just, you know what I mean, where we from? So we we just trying to give them the voice that they need. That's all. That's, that's young world. But to young people that stand up to what's right, you know what I mean? That's so basically what it is. Yeah. Well, we need more of that. That's for sure. Uh, you know, this this is a struggle that impacts a wide range of people, and you know, we're we're talking a reality that exists in our country now. Whether it's uh, Kensington or Detroit or New York or Camden or um, Atlanta or Houston, all around this country, Los Angeles, uh, Seattle, we are seeing people, the growing ranks of the poor, suffering more and more. And we're seeing a police, a police state that is emerging that is continuing to wholesale slaughter black African people in this country, as well as Latino and indigenous people and poor people in general. And, you know, this, this, the significance that the Pope has addressed some of these issues and not looked at just, uh, you know, the typical spiritual things that we want or those in, that don't have this kind of struggle want, maybe not us, because we want the real with the Pope. But so many else, uh, so many others out there just want to not have the reality discussed. And I think it's just really, really significant that uh, this opportunity exists to support a movement like this to get attention while the Pope is here. Because this country needs to be ashamed, uh, to be ranking absolute last in developed countries as far as infant mortality, as far as health care, as far as being the number one country in the entire planet that incarcerates more people, especially African people, than any other nation on the planet combined. That we have 49 to 50%, according to the census, that's the U.S. census, folks, of people in this country now that live at or below the poverty line. I could go on and on and on. And this has to be brought out to the world. The reality has to be discussed, and it's the, the P word is something you're not hearing either party talk about, are you, Sherry? Why do you think people are afraid of poverty? Um, of course they're not going to talk about poverty because they don't have a plan, they don't have an interest in ending it. Um, you know, as the saying goes, wherever there's a great deal of abundance and wealth, there's poverty. Um, and so we know that our elected officials are just interested in money being spent on ensuring that they have a job. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that the only thing that they really give a damn about is that they hold on to their job. They don't care that there's, you know, little babies that are down here tonight sleeping on the lot. They don't care that, um, you know, uh, these families can't pay their rent. They're so they're so busy saying, you know, that they deserve it, that they did something bad in their life, um, you know, that they, they, they must have went out drinking or did something instead of, um, you know, doing something responsible. Well, I think that we live in a country that has an abundance. There's plenty to go around, and no woman or child should be homeless, not even for five minutes, five seconds in this country. Why? Well, you, you, did you want to say something? Because 
I totally agree on that. I think it is just, you know, um, no one, especially women or children, should be sleeping on the street. It's definitely an issue that's growing and needs to be addressed. So I totally agree on that. No. Terry, how, how visible is the church of the poor? Uh, is it in a prime location? Say that again. I said the location of the Church of the Poor. Is the it location in a prime of the Church location? of the Poor. The location of the Church of the Poor is located on the corner of Kensington. I mean, on the corner is in Kensington, Philadelphia, on the corner of American and Cumberland. So, Amer- I remember American Street quite well in Philly. It's one of the main drags. Uh, uh, so, it's, it's right out there for people to see. That's right. right. It's right here. <laughs> well, you know, the, the common practice of cities now is to do everything they can to drive homeless folks out of the city so they're not visible. So, th- this is uh, really an attempt to show the reality and make it visible again. Is that right? Yes. Um, we have, you know, we're, we're not going to hide this anymore. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, we're out here on a vacant lot when uh, there's uh, a city that has tons of money, plenty of money, and, uh, you know, lots of, for that matter, lots of churches that have huge spaces and money and congregations and um, this just shouldn't be no. on so many different levels Absolutely. you know uh, you know in the morning we'll have to figure out you know I mean throughout the night and stuff you know how the drill goes we have to figure out where people are going to mm-hmm. use the bathroom um, we're going to have to figure out where people are going to have to do basic things for dignity like wash themselves um, you know, luckily somebody came by tonight and donated uh, a bunch of mattresses, so we were really lucky. And then there's a, a biker club that um, they're going to have different people come and uh, take turns doing security for us at night. So some people will be able to get some sleep. Well, you know... Just the basic necessities of survival. People don't realize this isn't just a stage thing. This is the reality that's happening for people to survive. And the reason why it's so important that our country acknowledges this and that it's seen invisible is so that people can finally come to terms with the reality that the promises of both the Democrats and the Republicans are failed policies, that poverty is continuing to increase, not decrease, and that we have uh, administrations that are accountable to Wall Street and big money and corporations, but not the people. And so I think it's really, really important for people to see and participate and support uh, what you're doing there, Sherry. And I wanted to just give, uh, in our closing minutes, uh, an opportunity for Connie or, or Ansela to make a further comment and then maybe just uh, have you make a closing comment, Sherry. Connie? We hope that um, people will really support us. The best way to support us right now is by sharing all of this on social media. And, uh, yeah, just share everything with us, the Church of the Poor. And and that can be found on the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign site as well, right? Yes. um, Right now, most of the pictures are going to go up on the Facebook Okay. Uh, so if people can go to the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign on Facebook, that would be great. Well, great. Uh, Con- uh, Connie, do you have a- any closing thoughts or questions for Sherry? No, I would just like to encourage as many uh, to give to this organization and to this effort. In fact, all roads and people should be headed to Philly to join in, but if we can't get there, we definitely should send some resources. Uh, and I, I would also add that uh, Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign Florida, you can also send support for what's happening in Philly to us as well. 
Uh, and you just go to our Facebook site, which is Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign Florida, or you can go to the Revolutionary Road Radio Show Facebook site. And either way, leave us a message so that we can tell you how to connect to uh, Sherry and what's happening in Philly to support it. And for my new uh, co-host, Ansela, did you have any closing thought you want to give? I just wanted to say, Sherry, uh, you're doing an awesome job. And um, me being here for the first time, it is so inspiring and it is motivating. And I would like to ask any and everybody to support her and if they can get to Philadelphia to support this organization. Sherry, you're doing an awesome job. And um, it was nice talking to you. And I hope I can talk to you again. And good luck because they need the support. Sherry, thank you for being on. Um, hey, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Um, next time we can be on the radio station, that'll be great. Yeah, actually, we'll probably have you on for a little bit next week to give us an update uh, of what's happening. Uh, that is, if uh, we're not there live, Connie and I, by some miracle, and maybe Ansel, to, <laughs> well, Ansel's got to work, but maybe Connie and I somehow can get there. And uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but... Uh, that was uh, Sherry Honkala with the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign in a, an encampment that has started called the Church of the Poor in lieu of the Papal Visit happening uh, next week in Philadelphia with Pope Francis. And I want to thank her for being on. I also want to thank my co-hosts, um, Connie Burton, of course. Uh, we always love having you as our co-host on the show here and just keeping it real and talking about the struggle from the streets in the real about uh, the oppression that we must fight against, the oppression we must fight against at the hands of both the state and the corporate uh, industrial complex. Uh, and Ansela, who has just joined us, and uh, we look forward to having her here on a regular basis, offering her thoughts and commentary and her own life experience. And Pete, thank you for uh, engineering for us tonight. No problem. And uh, we will be here again next week, as always, every Monday night at 10 p.m., the Revolutionary Road Radio Show. You can find us on Facebook. Like us. Uh, please like us uh, on Facebook. And then also uh, our YouTube channel, the Revolutionary Road Radio Show, as well as if you go to Tantalk1340.com. That's Tantalk1340.com. You can download our podcast. You can watch our live stream. And you can do the TuneIn app uh, if you have a smartphone. And uh, as always, uh, we want to thank uh, everyone who supports the show, including St. Petersburg Community Acupuncture, as well as uh, Refuge Ministries and the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, The Revolutionary Road. This has been a production of Squatter Productions, Revolutionary Road Radio Show, and the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, as well as Refuge Ministries at Tampa Bay. We encourage everyone to like us and listen to this show, and stay tuned for the revolution. It's coming your way.